In this session of the Purple Coffee Podcast, I speak to John Corcoran about the importance of not only building your relationship, but nurturing and using them to good affect people. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Purple Coffee Podcast, session 54 by all accounts, a podcast all about an inspiring story from a great entrepreneur. I'm your host, Turn Dog, and on this occasion I speak to John Corcoran, who is the man behind Smart Business Revolution. He does a great deal of writing, has an awesome podcast of his own, he's written a few books, he's a bit of a killer when it comes to webinar, but above all, he is a true master networker. I, I, I don't really like the term network or networker. It reminds me of those sort of smarmy things that you kind of have to go to in the early days to build relationships. But for the most part, relationships is the big one here. John has spent his entire life at times not even knowing it, building impressive relationships. He worked in the White House, he worked in Hollywood, he worked in Silicon Valley, all the while throwing himself into building worthy, worthy relationships. And eventually it led to him starting his own business and he got caught up in all the chaos that us entrepreneurs tend to do. We have this to write, this to create, this to do, social media, marketing, the financial side of things. And after a while, he realized he'd lost touch and he'd, he'd let those relationships he spent all those years building slip to the wayside. And this is what his great mistake is all about. John's been kind enough to jump on board, share his great tale for the success mistake. And I cannot wait to share it with you in the here and now in this very session. It's a bit of an eye opener that it's not just about the network that you start building today as an entrepreneur. It's about the network you've spent your entire life building. It might be friends, it might be family, it might be people from university or school. It might be from a different life and a different job. But it's about embracing that network that you've created, about those relationships and thinking, how can I serve these people the best? How can I make sure that I'm constantly giving so at some point down the line, I can do a little bit of taking and they'll help me thrive. John is a true master at this. I've taken a great deal from him in terms of how to approach my network and how to you know nurture my relationships i hope that he offers the same to you so we're going to get straight into it because you're not here to listen to me go on and on but before we get into the conversation let me first share a quick bio i've written in his honor because well he is an awesome individual and you may or may not know him so i'm gonna give you a bit of an insight into who the master john corkman is well here we go when you read about John Cochran and realise how varied his background is, it's easy to assume he's a vampire who's roamed the land for centuries. After all, how else could he have a career in the White House, in Silicon Valley, Hollywood, and in law? Nobody can do all that without living until 300 years old, but fear not, John, your secret is safe with me, I promise. Today, John is all about building epic networks and nurturing relationships with those you admire in business and life, knowing people, connecting people, learning from people. They form the foundations of who you are and the success you form. Through podcasting and writing and webinars and more, John's quite the busy bee. A busy bee of awesome who may suck your blood and live until the end of time, if you're not careful. Here we are. Enjoy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. I'm delighted to introduce you to the wonderful John Cochran, who's the man behind Smart Business Revolution. And we're very lucky to have John share his great mistake, which is in aid of my book, The Success Mistake. So, John, first of all, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me, Matthew. And I have to say, the way you pronounced my last name was probably the best I've ever heard it pronounced. Oh, really? Have, have I done yeah. it justice? Yeah, you have. Well, one, <laughs> people in the UK generally know how to spell and pronounce it because I'm, it's an Irish surname. <laughs> but secondly, it just, you know, it's, people here, they say Corcoran or something like that. It doesn't sound so good. Oh, man. No, we, um, we like to kind of get to the snappy bit. So if we can waste a yeah. syllable here or there, we're all about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Extra syllables are always good. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, I hope I do you justice in um, introducing you today because John has a background as well as all things a lawyer and he ended up working in the White House as a writer and a speechwriter and being on governmental campaigns and eventually left that world to join us crazy entrepreneurs 
and has a fantastic podcast and blog among other things today. So how does that sound, John? Have I have I done you justice there? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's kind of the background. So I have kind of an unusual background in that I worked, you're right, I worked in the Clinton White House in the Clinton years, started off my career there and then worked in politics for a number of years. I worked um, as a speechwriter for the governor of California and I've also worked in Silicon Valley and in the entertainment business working for DreamWorks, Steven Spielberg's movie studio. So I've worked in these different careers and now, as you mentioned, I have a boutique law firm mostly catering to small business owners and entrepreneurs. I'm here in the San Francisco Bay Area and the common thread amongst all of those was that it was all those relationships that helped me to get either the job position and, and help me today to support my family with my business. And so that's what I write about at Smart Business Revolution. I talk about how to use relationships that you have, how to develop relationships with people and how to turn that into actual dollars in the door, actual revenue, actual business. Fantastic. And I'm and I'm someone who loves building relationships. I think they're so important in business life. And we're actually going to be talking more about relationships in just a second. It's so interesting to hear you've kind of come full circle. You know, you started off yeah. with the law background and you went into politics and all these different other avenues. And now you have your own sort of law firm, which sort of caters to the entrepreneurial world. It's something that's always important for the new self-employed and business owner. Yeah, I mean, I get to, both of them are fun. I like serving my clients, and I also like being able to help people through the website, giving people advice on how to use their relationships. And it was one of those things that, it makes sense in retrospect now, looking back on it all, because there was this common thread amongst it all. But I wish, you know, I wish I'd gotten to that point quicker. And that's what we're going to talk about, is the mistakes that I made along the way, so we can get into that. Absolutely, we will do that right now, and I'm excited um, to hear about it. It's something that I've not come across yet in my, on my journey of a successful mistake and it's something very close to my heart and I certainly encourage you listeners slash watcher to head over to John's podcast after this as well. He has interviewed some amazing people. He's got a fantastic style so be sure to check that out too. So without further ado John I'm going to pass it over to you. I'm hoping you will share your great mistake with us. You know just tell us that story, take us on that journey, how it came about and the adventure you've had since. Yeah, so the, the thing that we, we talked about focusing on, I feel like I have plenty of mistakes in my background, but one of the bigger ones was, you know, I've I blogged for a long time, and I was working on building an online brand, working on building my online presence and, and blogging, and the, the funny thing is that the, the big mistake that I made is I failed to develop relationships with others in support of that journey. So every career, every industry that I've worked in, be it Silicon Valley, the entertainment industry, politics, you name it, I knew the importance of relationships. I knew the importance of getting together with other people, identifying the people that you want to build relationships with, and then proactively going out there and building relationships with those people, following up with them, keeping in touch with them, providing value to them. Those are things that I did every step of the way in every different industry, except when it came to building my blog and building my online brand. Early on, I really failed to do that. I didn't build relationships with other bloggers. I didn't build relationships with other people who are building an online brand. And so as a result, my growth was stymied. I really didn't go anywhere for a while until I had kind of a light bulb moment. And I actually credit a, a course that I took from a guy named Charlie Gilkey at Productive Flourishing, ProductiveFlourishing.com that led a course and I took this course and, and he said, write down this list of all the people that would help you if you're like launching a product, an online product, the other online entrepreneurs or bloggers who would help you. And I was like, this list is like three people long. <laughs> I didn't have that big a network. So I dedicated myself after that to building a larger network. And once I started doing that, then my growth started to happen. Wow. And it's something that is it's very interesting because obviously I can imagine your background, especially when you were working... Um, sort of on the government side of things, building a network and building relationships is so important because it's such a people kind of industry. And I think when you're an employee at a company, you're always thinking, I need to network because I need to network with you know fellow employees. You know, I'm trying to gather new sales or whatnot. I'm always on the lookout for a new job. But sometimes when people set up their own business, 
they take a different approach to networking. They think, well, I can't network and build a relationship with this individual because they're a competitor of mine. So you're always kind of just building networks with people who you think are going to be your clients, where in actual fact, you should be just wanting to build relationships with everyone who is like-minded and going to help you sort of grow down the line. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you take the approach of I'm going to be competitive with everyone, then you're not going to get anywhere. And there's a great saying I just heard. I just heard someone repeating it the other day. Um, I think the fr- the the idiom or whatever you call it, adage. I don't know exactly what the word is, but if you want to go far, go alone. Oh no! If you want, sorry. If you want to go, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yeah, I like that. And I think that's so true. So. You know, build relationships with other people and work together, help each other, and you'll go a lot farther. And that's absolutely true. Um, so that, you know, I just that, I just found that once I started building relationships with other people who were interested in building their brand, who were other bloggers, then that opened up opportunities. That opened up opportunities for me to interview other podcasters uh, on my podcast. It opened up opportunities for me to write for other sites. And all those things really added up. Oh, I, I totally agree on that one. And it's especially important when someone gets on to the online world because I, I just want to kind of create a scenario here where someone's created a fairly successful offline world. They've started a business. They've built a good network of individuals. They've got a good client list. They're doing well. And they decide they want to go online. They want to you know, start a blog or start a podcast. Just start you know, tweeting or whatever it might be, their mantra is going to be, well, I'll just be able to create content, send it out there and all will be fine. But it's so vital to build a network online because there's so many people, there's so much noise and you need to start filling in those dots and connecting those pieces together. Right. Yeah. And there is um, a a guy that I I know named Jim Wang who started a site called bargaineering.com which it was a financial, personal finance blog that he started maybe six or seven years ago or something like that, and he sold it about three or four years ago for $3 million. And you would think that, you know, right, building a blog that's worth $3 million, what, what do you need to do? You could probably, like, sit in your closet and just pound away and, <laughs> and, and write, you know, write blog posts, right? But he actually said, that every opportunity that he's had has come from a relationship with someone. Everything that he's created has come from a relationship with someone. This is from someone who built a, a very successful blog that he sold for a lot of money. And so it goes to show you, yeah, it is absolutely crucial. And to, to mention, to, to hit on your point about business owners, it's true. When you're an employee, oftentimes people, well, there's different kinds of networking. There's networking for your job, building your network for your job. But there's also building your network in case you need to get another job or to move into a different job or a different industry or something like that. And then when you become a business owner, it's different because you got to keep the lights on. you got to keep work going. And a lot of times people start off as a solopreneur or a very small business. And so they're so focused on the actual doing the actual work that they're not focused on building the relationships that will lead to the more work down the line. So you end up in this marketing roller coaster where you get very busy and so you don't do any marketing. You don't do any building relationships. And then things slow down and then you run, 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 try and get a bunch of work. And the more consistent approach is to constantly be building these relationships. And so I've used things like my podcast and like uh, interviewing people like you're doing right now and quoting them in articles that I've written. And things like that really over time consistently will, will build a lot of relationships. And again, you could look at it as I'm not going to form relationships with other podcasters or bloggers because they're my competition. But especially on the online world, that's just not how it works. Everyone interviews each other, everyone links to one another. And if you can build strong relationships with these individuals, it will take you down fantastic routes. Maybe not today, but at least someday down the line. Yeah, I mean, it's not a limited pie scenario. The pie is infinite and it's constantly expanding too. There are more people, more English-speaking people that are coming online that are joining the online world. So that's constantly expanding. And even if, let's say, that you're you know, a vegan food blogger and you want to write about that, you know, there might, and you're looking at, you know, oh, there's all these successful vegan food, food bloggers out there. Well, you, know, you might have a different spin on things that, that might resonate with people or you know, maybe you're writing about vegan food and 
just people relate to you better than they do someone else who's very successful. And so they want to read what you have to say. So there's no reason to get discouraged by that. I think that there are tremendous amounts of opportunities out there and you don't need to worry about being competitive. You know, you can, you can work together on these things, even if you're very closely related. I mean, there, there are others who write about similar things, topics that I write about and, and talk about or podcast about that. And we collaborate and help each other all the time. And it's, you know, it just leads to more growth rather than less. Yeah, it is. It's one of those things where you think would lead to less growth, you know, sharing, mm-hmm. sharing resources and whatnot. But more often than not, I speak to entrepreneurs and business owners all the time, the more they collaborate, usually the, the bigger their pie grows. It's, it's something yeah. that isn't always rational, but it does work time yeah. and time again. So you got on to the into the online world and you you went against the normal gray and you'd spent all this time in the previous in in, in sort of in pre- previous employment networking building relationships you come online you start your own business and it's gone on the back burner it probably comes back to like you said you're so busy doing you forget to actually market and build relationships out there so when when was the turning point for you was it when you had this list of free people and you thought Oh my God, I don't know anybody here that needs to change. Yeah, that was really it. It was really realizing that, you know, I I took a look at what I was trying to do with building my online brand and building my online business. And I realized that I I had just completely screwed up. I had not done what I'd done in every industry before. I'd not built those relationships. So that was around the time I decided, okay, I'm going to start a podcast. That was a big one yeah. because starting a podcast is, as you know, interviewing people is an excellent way to get to know people. It's an excellent way to provide value to people. So, you know, someone has a book coming out and you interview them and, you know, and publish it on your podcast, even though if only a couple hundred, or a couple thousand people listen to it, that's a real value to the person you've interviewed. Or you just you know, spend some time together talking, getting to know one another, how you can help each other out. Who else you can introduce one another to? We were just talking about that a couple of moments ago before we started recording this. We were talking about someone that I could introduce you to. And and I the other thing is when I'm interviewed by someone else, I look at that as they're doing me a favor. So then I want to turn around. I want to help that person in some way. And so that's a way that you're benefiting. You know that you Matthew going out and doing interviews with others. Hopefully, the people that you're interviewing are thinking, "Oh, that was so nice of Matthew to include me in his book project. That's so nice of him to interview me. I'm going to do something nice for him." And that's where the real benefit comes in for someone like you going out there and you know helping other people, giving them a little bit of a platform by including them in your book. Fantastic. So, was it just the podcast, or did you? I mean, what sort of things did you um, do to start building this online network and building relationships with people? It's really integrating it in everything you do. So if you see people who are really savvy at it, you'll see that they are constantly trying to promote other people's stuff almost more than they are themselves or equally or, or just, you know, maybe even 70, 30. It's not, you know, like people, there's some people who go on Twitter and they think it's set to broadcast. They, they think that, oh, I'm just going to, you know, this is all the things that I'm up to. And really, it's not. It's the other, a, a tool like Twitter is meant to be used to promote other people, help other people, answer other people's questions. So that's one. Um, writing about people. So I write regularly for Art of Manliness and a bunch of other sites. And I will always think about who I can include in an article. Like, let's say that I'm writing something for a large platform like Art of Manliness, which is a, a men's interest blog that has a huge audience. Something They get something like 15 million page views per month, which is enormous for blogs go. Now, I, I, when I'm writing something, it's more interesting to have stories in there. It's more interesting to have original reporting and articles and quotes from people that I've interviewed. So I'm constantly looking on the lookout for other people to include in my stories. And But that also provides value to people mm-hmm. because they get a link to their site or they get a little bit of exposure. So I'm constantly thinking about that. So it's it's thinking about, you know, the podcast is one platform, uh, but it could be something smaller. It could be just like someone's got a book coming out and I tweet it, you know, and, and that's something that takes very little energy and effort. Or it could be something like just introducing people, you know. I mean, there are people who I've met who ha- who also have online platforms or who are bloggers or whatever, who I haven't quoted them in an article yet, 
I haven't interviewed them for my podcast yet because I have only limited time available to do both of those two things. But there are other ways I can provide value to them. I can introduce them to someone else. That's a big one. Particularly if they have something to promote, I can introduce them. I, I know a lot of podcasters now. So I can introduce them to other podcasters who've got large podcasts with large audiences and help them to promote their book or business or whatever it is coming out. So it's it's constantly thinking about how can I help this person? And it, it also could be something very small. It could be something like, you know, just as you get to know them, they're looking for a graphic designer. They need help with that. Mm -hmm. Or they're going on vacation to Mexico and they need help with where they should go. Or their daughter's going to college and she needs help deciding on where she should go and you can give some advice on that. It doesn't really matter. It could be it could be anything, but make it relevant to the person that you're talking to. I think it's so important to see that it's ingrained in your brain and I could see it straight away. As soon as we got onto Skype, you know, you were asking me things and you, you asked where I lived and you were like, oh, I just was interviewed by someone else who I think is close to you. I should introduce you. So it's that mm -hmm. mindset where you're always thinking, how can I introduce people? How can I connect these dots? And it's a fantastic thing to have ingrained in your mind because building relationships, whether it's relationships for you or for other people, it's a very selfless act. It's not something where you're trying to sell anything per se, but usually it will come back to you in some form later down the line as a benefit. Absolutely. And there's a concept that I have written and, and, and spoken about, which I call the triple win, which is, you know how people talk about a win-win, yeah. right? Something that's a win for you and a win for me. Well, I find it's helpful to think about how can we create opportunities that are a win-win-win. So it's a win for you, it's a win for me, it's a win for someone else, some other community yeah. or some other audience or some other group of people. So if I, if I think about introducing you to Anna from the Engaging Brand who lives, I think, near you, who interviewed me for her podcast, well, if that turns into some kind of relationship, if, if you interview each other for your podcast or book project or whatever, then that becomes then that piece of content that goes out into the world is going to be of additional value to her audience or to your audience. You introducing her audience to her, her to your audience or, or she introducing you to her audience, that will be a, you know, an interview and advice that will be of help to that community as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a triple win. It's, it's even more. And when you think about it in those terms, you're not doing things for selfish reasons. You're not doing things to benefit yourself, but it will benefit you because then that audience will probably learn about you and, and more people will learn about what you're up to and, and just a larger group of people are more likely to benefit from the work that you're out there doing. Well, it's like you say, you know, you're providing links. Chances are me and Anna are speaking and we say, oh yeah, we were introduced by John, you know, and yeah. so you should check him out. And it's that, it kind of can it's constantly sort of just spreading the love. And like you say, you can never yeah. tell when these relationships will benefit you. And as long as you're getting into it for the right reasons, it probably will come back at, in some form eventually down the line. Yeah. And all this yeah. building of relationships, it's such a huge part of your business now. You know, you've you've created books and everything, and all the content on your website's generally um, aimed towards networking, building these relationships. It's something that was void of your online world just a few years ago, and now here it is, probably the lead thing of like it's your usp yeah it, it has become that and um that's a longer story how i ended up there um <laughs> but i you know i was i i needed to focus i was a little too broad when i was in, initially building my site and i was talking about entrepreneurship generally and then it's one of those things where i listen to other people so often we you know we pursue something because it's challenging to us because it's interesting to us and because we think we can make some money Rarely do people just, you know, think, um, what career should I pursue or what type of business should I, uh, you know, should I open based on what other people want from me? So oftentimes we're just very, we're, we're reluctant to listen to that. And so for the longest time, I had friends and colleagues who would say to me, John, you're so good at building relationships. How do you do that? And I just kind of thought, well, you know, I don't know. I just do it. You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's nothing special. I mean, I just, I don't know. I just follow up with this person and this person. And I introduce these people and that's it. And I'm done. And I have a podcast. I interview people. You know, it was like, it just seemed kind of simple to me. But oftentimes our strengths seem simple to us. Like they, they seem like things mm -hmm. that everyone does when it, in fact, that's not the case. When in fact, there, you might have a special ability 
that other people would provide value, that other people would really value to learn from. So when I, when I listened to other people, when I finally said, okay, 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 <laughs> all right, maybe I should start writing about this, then that's when things really started to, to take off. And what I like about it, what I really like about what I write about online is that there's only so much good I can do in this world. I can introduce you to Anna, and I can introduce you to someone else, and I can do, you know, introduce 10 people a day if I, you know, have the time to do it. But if I teach other people the importance of introductions, and if I show them how easy it is to do, and I can, and if I show them how much they can actually personally benefit from taking time out of their day to do introductions, imagine that. I mean, that's infinite. That mm -hmm. Then it mushrooms, then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And, I, and my impact on this world can be much larger by teaching others. Well, I love it. And I can only look at it from my personal things. Wherever I consider myself a decent relationship person, I always hold it of high value. But only recently have I kind of taken some serious steps to make sure I'm not only building new relationships, but I'm looking after existing ones. And mm -hmm. it's like you say, you get so caught up in the daily grind. You have to do work. You're having to look for new clients. You're just trying to keep the, the lights on, as you say. Mm -hmm. And it is mm -hmm. easy to forget about it. And I realized that I'd built some good relationships in the past and not spoken to them people for maybe weeks or months or maybe yeah. even a year plus because time just flies by all the time. It's insane. Yeah. And as new business owners and entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, time just, you know, it escapes us. So recently I've started to add things into my CRM system where I'm getting these constant reminders to make sure I'm touching base every couple of months so that my relationships can mature over time. And it's something that's so important and you've ingrained it into your world where now one of the first things that you think about is like, how can I develop this relationship? How can I extend it? How can I spread the love in some other form? I think it's a vital part so what tips would you give to, you know, this crazy stressful entrepreneur who's just started his own business or she's just gone out on her own and she wants to build relationships, but she just struggles for time, you know, her to-do list keeps growing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's so true. I mean, so many people struggle with having enough time to get everything done. Well, you mentioned a CRM program. And that's great. For people who don't know what that is. It's a customer relationship management is what that stands for. And it's things like Salesforce.com is a traditional one. Um, Contactually is the one I use. Insightly is a free one out there, free and premium. Right. Uh, and it's, yeah, okay. And, and it's, it's basically a program for managing relationships and managing follow-ups with people. And I've written about this before. I wrote a, an, a post about um, the importance of weak ties. Weak ties are basically relationships that we have with people that have gone stale. And so often those relationships are a great source of information because they're not the close friends that we see regularly. We're not at parties. We're not, we're not working with them regularly. And so, you, you know, as you said, a year or two might go by before we've touched base with them. But they may actually have access to information or jobs or opportunities that we don't know about. So it's really important to keep those relationships fresh and to check back in with people. But as far as re developing relationships in, and to have them support your business, what I would recommend people to do is create what I call a conversations list. This is a concept that I write about on my site. It's basically a list of 50 plus people to begin with that you'd like to build and deepen a relationship with over the course of the next 12 months. And it's basically, you know, people that you see that you'd like to like to provide value to and that you see as like your ideal circle or network a year or two or three down the line. So don't aim small. I want you to aim big on this. List out the and it should only take you about 20 minutes or so to write out this list, but it's, you know, it might be people that you know already or it might be people that you haven't met before, or someone who you admire, or an author of a business book that you admire, or an entrepreneur, or a business owner, or something like that, or a friend of a friend. You know, get creative about the list of people, but they're all people that would help, that you would like to help, and that could eventually help you in your journey, in your business. And doing that will put some real deliberate intention behind where you want to go with your business. So many people leave, leave relationships up to chance, which is fine when it comes to our personal relationships. I'm not saying you do this when it comes to your personal relationships. Mm -hmm. When it comes to your business relationships, those are crucial. Those will have such an important impact on where your business goes. 
And so often people just, they just kind of randomly have this weird collection of people, former colleagues or, you know, or people that they work with immediately who are hired at the same company. And those are the people they spend the majority of their time with rather than being deliberate and intentional and thinking about the people that you want to build relationships with because you really can build that network. So I'd highly recommend that anyone who has just recently started their own business or who is interested in starting their own business and hasn't yet start by putting together their conversations list. And the key word I get from all that is deliberate. And once you put something like that on paper, you you have that mindset of I want to connect with X or Y, you know, that means I can just check in, see what events they're going to. Can I follow them on Twitter? Can I reply? You know, can I build it that kind of way? So it is, it's just yeah. being deliberate and thinking, right, how can I be conscious? And it sounds like a key turnaround for you is just having relationships at the forefront of your mind. And after a while, it just became second nature. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it does eventually become second nature if you spend time on it. But tools like CRM programs can help to prompt you and make sure that you're remembering to develop those relationships. And you can also create priority levels. So, you know, uh, there are certain people that are really high in priority level to me, you know, and, and everyone should be like this, like people that you want to maybe have some touch point with on a weekly basis. Other people, it's maybe just once a month. Other people, it's just every six months. You just want to make sure the, the relationship doesn't go stale. Yeah. For me personally, so here locally, I, I, pr I practice law. And there's, I'll tell a story. There was a, a real estate agent that I um, that had re referred a bunch of business to me, like three or four clients over a three or four month period. And then I was looking through, I keep track of where incoming clients come from. And I was looking through this list and I, I realized I hadn't been referred to anything by her in quite a while. I looked through and I realized I hadn't contacted her in about nine months or so. And all the referrals had come about eight or nine months earlier. Mm -hmm. So what do you know? Mm -hmm. So having a CRM program will prompt you to say, hey, look, this important person you haven't touched base with. So I sent her an email. I said, hey, let's get coffee or lunch or something like that. We ended up going to lunch. You know, someone I get along with well. And what do you know? A week or two later, she refers something to me. Yeah. I'm not I'm not saying this for selfish reasons, but these, you know, this is what relationships do and this is how relationships deteriorate because we just neglect them so don't let your relationships atrophy make sure you continue to develop them and nurture them and it is so easy for it to happen it's, it's happened to me and i you know it's not a purposeful thing you just think oh it you know it'll be fine i'll get to it but you know six months goes down the line it's like oh my god i've let a really fantastic relationship go stale there and i just love how you turned it all around because you were in industries where it was all about relationships. It was a key part of your life. Um, but even for someone like you, you start up your own business and you just let them fade away a bit. But once you bring them to the forefront and you make it a purposeful and deliberate aspect of your daily day, great things happen. So it's a fantastic mm -hmm. thing. And I feel every single person watching and listening to this can have that moment where they go, oh my God, I haven't spoken to Sally in six months and she's someone mm -hmm. I should be speaking to right now. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure there's someone. Right. Um, and, and there's a, you know, different CRM programs work differently, but there is a, a way, like in Contactually, for example, and by the way, if anyone's interested in, in that, I have a tutorial on my site, at Smart Business Revolution, on how I use a CRM for follow up for following up with people. You just go to Smart Business Revolution and then start here. And I've got a tutorial on how I use these things. And one of the things, this is a cool trick, which I'm sure you can do in any CRM program, is you can sort your contacts by least contacted. It, it might be phrased differently in 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 Sightly and other ones, but um, at least in Contactually, it's least contacted or least recently contacted or something like that. And there's one way of sorting it where it'll show you like junk emails, like literally people you've emailed once, like someone you bought something, bought a futon off Craigslist from, right? That's not what you want. What you want is the people that you've actually connected with multiple times, but you, but you haven't connected with them in quite a while. And so like I'll sort that and I'll look through and it'll be like, wow, look, I mean, this is someone that I can't believe it's been two years since my last email with that person, right? And, you know, it's like someone that you consider to know better than you realize you know you you contact them it's like wow i have not connected with that person in two years that's crazy yeah. and the last thing you want to do is to like lose your job 
or or need to ask them for something right and and have it be like it's been two years since you've contacted this person then you send them an email being like hey how you been good to see you by the way you know and then everyone's gotten those kinds of obnoxious emails right well that's why i started doing it because i felt like there were certain people and i would only be in touch with them when i had like a new book launch or something and it does it makes you feel a bit slimy it's like yeah, God, yeah. I'm not friends with them for that reason, and yeah. you know, I do genuinely enjoy this person's company. Yeah. I should really be speaking to them, you know, every now and again, and not just, oh, by the way, can you um, tweet about my book? Cheers. Yeah, right, right, right. But it's hard to. I mean, we all have thousands of people in our network, and so it's very difficult to keep track of those things. Yeah. And it just comes around when it comes to that book launch. Yeah. It comes around when you need that thing. That's when you're thinking of that person. Unfortunately, when you don't need that thing, you are often just neglect the relationship or just forget about the relationship unless you have something there to prompt you. Or the other thing I do is that you know if you think of someone, if, if you come across anything, like you were at a restaurant that you went to with this other friend two years earlier, you know, and you go there again, and you're and, and you're talking with your wife or girlfriend or friend or whatever at the restaurant, you're like, yeah, last time I was here, I was with so-and-so. That should prompt you that you should say, you know mm-hmm. what? I should connect with that person yeah. for any, any reason whatsoever, you know, and just like send them an email, say, Hey, we just went to this restaurant and I was thinking of you. Bam. That's it. I love receiving stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it's like, Oh yeah, that was great. We had such a good time. How you been? What have you been up to? Something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's just a great excuse for connect, reconnecting with someone. And then six months later, when you send them an email saying, Hey, can you tweet about my new book? They're kind of like, sure. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I think it's um, sage advice. Thank you so much, John. Building relationships is, you know, it's universal. I don't care what industry in, whether it's online, offline, whether you're new to the entrepreneurial game or you're a dab hand, relationships are so key. And whenever I speak to an entrepreneur, you know, you, a lot of their stories comes back to some kind of relationship. You know, they got yeah. to where they were because they knew somebody, you know, they were introduced to the right thing. They are so important, but they do, you know, they, they drift away if we're not careful. And I love your advice and I especially love your contact list, you know, write in 50 names down of people you want to be in touch with in the next year and just being deliberate about that. I think that's a fantastic tool and I think I'm going to implement that for myself. That is fantastic (laughs) advice. So thank you so much for jumping on Skype, sharing your wise words. It's great to see how you, you know, took a hold of your relationships and took them to the next level. Excellent. Thank you, Matthew. It was a pleasure. Indeed. And thank you, viewer slash listener, for watching or listening. And yeah, until next time, thank you so much and cheers. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me on today's session of the Purple Coffee Podcast. And a big thanks to you, John, for being part of not just this podcast, but the book for Success Mystique too. His entire ethos on building and nurturing relationships is a big one. I hope you've taken a lot from this particular session, but I assure you, you will learn a great deal more by following his writing and his podcast and everything else. He is an inspiring individual when it comes to networks. I've taken so much from him. So from me to you, John, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you can learn more about John as well as today's show notes over at tdog.co forward slash purple coffee 54. That's tdog.co forward slash purple coffee 54. Like I say, you can learn all about John. I encourage you to subscribe to his podcast in his little world. But whilst on my page, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing his podcast because that helps folk like me grow and touch more people. Not in a physical, literal sense, of course, because that might be a bit weird. And although I am a tad quirky, I'm not, you know, that kind of weird. Anyway, I digress. I'm going to now leave you to it. I hope you have a fantastic end to your day and go forth, not only build a network of ultimate power and awesomeness, but take care of a network you've spent your entire life building without even knowing it. Cheers.